glad you're all here today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. Uh, we're going to cover SWOT analysis today. And this is a really critical piece of trying to navigate our way through this uh, crisis that we're all in. And uh, so I thought it would be a good time to talk about it. Last week, we talked about cash flow planning. And this week, we're going to dive into SWOT analysis. Uh, hopefully, you'll get a little bit of a feel for what you need to do. And then from there, uh, you can work on it on your own. If you need help, we're obviously here to help you. Um, I did send out an uh, email earlier today with some handouts. You should have three handouts. You don't need them for today, but if you do want to look at them, there's one that's a, uh, a mind map outline of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there's another that is some tools that would be useful in doing a SWOT analysis. And the third is a sample uh, outcome of a SWOT analysis for a restaurant. Uh, I thought that would, might be a common denominator that we could all look at. So anyway, to start off with, why do we need to do a SWOT analysis? And we're going to get into what it's, what's involved, but we need to tear apart our business. And that's really what a SWOT analysis does. And we need it because we need to improve. You know, we don't know what's going to happen coming up. Uh, so we need to figure out how we can do things better. Uh, you know, you've seen like, for instance, restaurants that never had carry out or never had a lot of carry out. All of a sudden they're trying to figure out how to do it. Um, that's the type of thing that all of us are going to have in different ways. Uh, also, a SWOT analysis will help us establish current reality uh, because, you know, what are we really good at? What are we bad at? Where, where do we have problems? And um, that's just something that um, we, we just need to keep looking at and drilling into. Uh, and this is where you'll see as you go through it, you start having a little better understanding of what you, where you really stand. You know, I always go to the financial statements and you might look at a balance sheet and that tells you your current reality. Well, that only gives you a, a piece of it, especially now. So this is a good way, good tool. The other thing is, you know, most, pe most small business owners, and there's a few that are doing very well right now, but most small business owners, are feeling a little out of control. It's like they know they don't have control over what's going on. And that's scary, you know. It's, and so what we want to do is get a little more control through the use of tools like a SWOT analysis. The more we plan, the more we figure out what we can control. We can't worry about everything we can't control, but we can control an awful lot. What this is gonna to lead to though, is to developing a plan. You know, what are we gonna do about this? We're just gonna throw up our hands and say, nah, I don't have a clue or no, there's things we can do. Even the worst situation, there are some things we can do to help improve our, our situation. And then the last thing it, for why we do it is, once we develop the SWOT analysis and the plan for what we're gonna do, it's a good tool for getting your team together and communicating with the team and just say, okay, hey, this is reality. We got problems here. We got this, we got that. That's okay. In your team members, that can freak them out. But instead, when you say, you know what? Okay, we got it. We're gonna, here's what we're gonna do for it. And you're gonna use them as part of this whole process. And we're gonna get into that in a minute. Once you start communicating that to them, you start working as a team again, because this coronavirus, you know, it just sort of disrupted everything. And all of a sudden there is no team anymore. <laughs> and so now it's a matter, we gotta pull everybody back together. So that's why we do it. So what does it look like? Well, I, one of the handouts is a uh, sample for a restaurant and we're not gonna get into the details of it, but you can look through it. But this is a, just a rough draft of a, what could happen with the restaurant. There's a lot of strengths, there's weaknesses, there's opportunities and threats. All of us have some of that. And the, the issue is how to figure out 
what they are. And we're going to go through a method of doing that. And so that's just, you know, this is pretty simple or it can look simple. Uh, it's really a little messier than that. And normally we do it on a whiteboard and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then there's uh, the other handout with some sample questions. And that's just to get you started. And we'll again, talk about this in a little more detail, but those are just starting points for really figuring out what's going right, wrong, and where do we have problems and, and opportunities? So where do we start here? Well, first, you know, what is a SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis is, stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The strengths and weaknesses are typically internal. You know, the what, what do you do right? You know, and again, you're going to look at this sort of before the, um, before the coronavirus hit and all that. But then the weaknesses, we start having to blend those in, you know, because maybe you were a restaurant and you're going to do carry out, but you weren't set up for it. Well, that's a weakness. Now, it's something we can work on. And that's the point. Once we start identifying these things, then we can, okay, we can fix this. We don't want to necessarily fix every weakness because we can't. We got to prioritize this. But the internal part, we have a little more control over. And that's what we, you know, that's what we tend to focus on. The external, and we're going to get into that in a second, is stuff that's outside of our control. But we can control, you know, we can't control what happens, but we can control our readiness for it. We can control how we react to it. And this is the part that people don't think about. You know, if somebody comes up and slaps you in the face, you know, you can't control that. But what you can do is control your emotions on how you deal with it. It's like, why did they do that? You know, you can back off, you can deescalate, or you can hit them. It's, you know, those are things that we can do though. And so that's where the internal part is really your systems, your people, your branding, your marketing, your the products and services you deliver. What, what do you do really right and what do you do really wrong? Or where, where do you have weaknesses? And this is something that, you know, we're going to talk about as far as it's critical that we're brutally honest is throughout this whole discussion. Because this doesn't work unless we're honest with it. You know, am I good at being a CPA? I'm good. I'm not great. You know, those are the type of things that we have to say, you know, what are my weaknesses? I'm not, I used to be audit. Well, I can't do that anymore. That would be a weakness if I was hired to do an audit. That's where we have to be honest with ourselves. So then we go to the external pieces though. This is the opportunities and threats. This is the stuff outside of our business. So obviously like the coronavirus, that's completely outside of our business. None of us really thought about this in January. A few people were thinking about it, you know, in the government and all that, but most small business owners weren't thinking about it. And what is the impact? You know, some businesses that are selling alcohol, like a hand sanitizer and stuff, this is a huge opportunity. They can expand their business. Other businesses like restaurants and retail and um, some distribution, they're somewhere, you know, they can, it could destroy their business or it's somewhere in between. And so the opportunities part here is where, what can we do that we're not doing now? You know, this could be adding a second facility. Um, you know, uh, like if you're a restaurant, you're in house and now you start doing carry out and you're starting to, we're starting to see people rethink what they can do. You know, for instance, we're doing this zoom call like this. I wouldn't have tried this six months ago. I mean, I've used zoom for a couple of years, but I wouldn't have tried this just because clients weren't ready for it. Now it's like, this is our only option. So all of a sudden, there's a new opportunity. I can greatly leverage my time. Same with the threats. 
you know, what are the threats now? We don't even know what all our threats are. This is where we have a lot of blind spots. You know, we talked last week about the blind spots in doing your cash flow plans. Well, this is, you know, there's, there's some blind spots here because for instance, all of a sudden, small business, like for me, anybody could help you guys do your, do what you do. And we're not limited by location anymore. And so, you know, for me, that could be a, that could be a blind spot. I am aware of it. And so obviously we're trying to do something about it, but that's where each of us has to look really hard at our businesses and say, what is right and wrong? What can we do? So that's the basics of a SWAT as far as the internal, external opportunities, threats, strengths, weaknesses. Those, that's how we do, that's what it's about. So how do we actually do it? Here's where I think it's critical to look at who's, your, who's on your team. You know, you get your management team together for doing this. Maybe you get some external people. You know, you could use somebody like myself, your banker. Maybe there's a key business advisor, you know, that you know that would be great to come into your business. For a while, I had an external board of advisors just to bounce things off of, and they threw things at me. And it was great because they thought about things differently than, than I think about them. And so it forced us to look at this, but get the right people in the room. At a minimum, you can do it yourself. You don't get quite the, the in-depth analysis of it, but it's a starting point. The key is start. Don't try to make this perfect. And then it's really about brainstorming. You know, one of the tools I gave you is a blank sheet of paper with, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats listed in four quadrants. Just start making notes. You know, I, we typically do this on a whiteboard. Um, you know, you don't need software for this. You don't need, you just need some curiosity and honest interaction. You know, we need to approach this like, you know, we really want to figure out what's going on and we can't worry about our egos. You know, I may think I'm a great CPA, but maybe there's some things like I'm not. And so I need people around me that are going to say, no, yeah, we, you know, you, you kind of suck at this or you're not a great manager or whatever it is. We need to get that level. And that's what it, that's really what a SWOT analysis is. It's a brainstorming session around a framework of those four areas. And then you cross cut it with your operational areas, you know, as far as the internal side, you know, your sales, your marketing, your operations, people, physical location in some situations. And then you, the harder part gets into the opportunities and threats because you don't know what to ask. You don't know what's going to come into play. You don't know what competitor is coming directly into your business and is going to mess with you. Those are all things that are outside of your control and you may not know about them. And that's where it requires, okay, we have that risk. Maybe we're in a business that's easy to get into. So if that's the case, then we always have that risk. Maybe we're in a business that's really hard to get into. Well, then, then it's less of a risk. So what we really want to do is just, like I said, be honest and, and dig in. What's the outcome of all this? Well, you know, I gave you a quick example of, um, uh, completed SWOT analysis, you know, that's the, that's the first step, you know, and then we have to develop our plans from that. What are we going to kind of prioritize? What are we going to work on? Because we can't work on all of it. And this is the key thing is, you know, it's a starting point and that's all it is. But what we're, we're hoping to get to is, you know, we got to figure out what do we need to keep doing? You know, what do we need to fix? These are the internal side. You know, what opportunities do we need to focus on? Probably one thing out of each of these is what we want to really work, work on. And then what do we need to plan for? You know, do we have a disaster plan? Um, you know, some businesses are better set or are better prepared for the pandemic because they've been accumulating cash. They're ready for it. 
you know, so we can't control a pandemic, but we can control what we do. And that's the part where once we get on the other side of this, you know, this is a good learning curve, learning experience for all of us. It's not one we ever really want, but it is a great tool for helping us navigate this world. So that's the, you know, the basics on a SWOT analysis. I know I went through it real quickly. So if anybody's got questions, please either email them to me or throw them in the uh, chat box and uh, we can talk about those for a couple minutes. Um, I got a couple questions already. Let's see, where, where, was, where is that? Okay. Um, one question that uh, pops up is, you know, how do we get the maximum benefit out of a SWOT analysis? And this is something, uh, you know, like I said, it can be done, you know, by yourself in the kitchen table, but the maximum benefit is to slow it down, spend some time, you know, with your key team members, management members, if you have somebody external, uh, just slow it down. And then something I didn't talk about, but this is a, just a great tool. It's called the five whys. And the five whys is basically, you start asking why. So if I say you should do a SWOT analysis, you ask why. And I say, well, it's so we can improve. And then you say, well, why do we need to improve? It's like, because we don't understand current reality. And then all of a sudden, you know, you say, well, why don't, why do you think that? And, you know, well, I don't think we have control. And so therefore we need to do this. And you start establishing this drilling down. And generally when you get to about the fourth or fifth why, then that is when you start really getting into some really cool pieces of what you need to fix. You know, this is, <laughs> you need to have the curiosity of a five-year-old. Uh, my office is about five minutes from, or not even five minutes, it's five minutes if you walked between here and our uh, public library. And when my kids were five years old, I have twins, they, uh, my wife took them to the library and then she was going to stop by the office one day. And she literally counted between the library and my office, they'd ask 20 questions. That's what we got to do. We just got to start blasting questions. We may not know the answers to any of this. It doesn't matter. We need, we just need to get the ideas out there. So, you know, that's, that's where you can start getting some, the real big benefits out of this. Uh, any other questions? That was a, that's a good one. You know, oh, the other thing here is uh, some people may wonder whether or not they can actually do it. You know, can anybody do these things? And I really do think so. You just have to develop that curiosity. I think uh, everybody on this call could do this by themselves. Again, there's going to be some benefits of doing it in a group. Um, let's see. Any, let's see what else we have here. Um, you, oh, can you facilitate this? You know, facilitate, having a facilitator for a SWOT analysis is a great idea. Yeah, obviously, this is something we do. We can help clients with that. Uh, and that's something that we, uh, having somebody out outside of your organization, and I talked a little bit about that, but having them really there as a facilitator really can help pull information out because they can push when, you know, maybe you got a family business and somebody's not going to push somebody else. Well, maybe the facilitator can. So that, that is something we do and it is a great idea. Um, let's see. Uh, it's helpful to ask questions of your team and of your customers. Yeah. This is a, I think this is something that again, you doing you're doing this in different pieces you know you might do a SWOT analysis with your management team 
and you might get your uh, you know a couple members of from your operational team on the within this uh, SWOT analysis, but you also need to be getting external input. So you know as preparation for a SWOT analysis, you might take some time and talk to a couple key customers, find out what their thoughts are, especially during the current environment. You know if you're uh, are they being impacted? You know, knowing more about the, what your customers uh, are going through helps you. You know, like for instance, you might have a great business that is doing really well. And then, you know, you're, cut, you're busy and, you know, everything's going well. But your customers are having a severe cash flow problem. And think about, um, for instance, uh, a business that supplies uh, equipment to hospitals. If it's, you may still be busy, but some portions of the ho some hospitals are having severe cash flow problems because all they're doing is focusing on COVID nineteen, and so that starts impacting your cash flow because they can't pay things timely. So that's where we have to know more. I mean, we have, you can start at any place, but you, and you can't worry about getting it perfect. But if you have time, yeah, I would spend some time with uh, customers, team members, vendors, bankers, you know, whoever it is, get some outside input. Um, somebody said that they thought this would be a great team exercise. This is a, uh, yeah, this could be used uh, depending on the size of your team, you know, if you had a 15 person uh, business, you get all 15 together and you start going through this. It, there's obviously somebody may not be able to participate as much as others, but yeah, you, there's nothing wrong with getting your whole team together. Maybe you do a preliminary one with your management team, or maybe you take the whole team, do it, and then you do a second one with your management team to help prioritize. There's a lot of, there's, like I said, there's no real right or wrong way of doing this. It's just, you do need to do it. Let's see. Um, and, you know, somebody said they, they get tunnel vision too often. And that's, that's the problem with all of this is we do get tunnel vision. We get used to our way of doing things and we think, oh, that's right. And, you know, it's been working. And it's working until all of a sudden it doesn't. You know, uh, I was not completely prepared for COVID-19 as far as working from home. We're partially, and we were able to get by, but not completely. Those are some things, you know, as part of this process, I know I will be doing some things differently because we're probably gonna have a second wave of it. You know, hopefully it'll be a small wave and hopefully it won't be that crazy, but I'm going to be a little better prepared. So that's the part where, you know, we, we got to get out of this. This is how we do it mode because that actually creates some other issues for us. Um, let's see. I think that's most of the questions. Anybody else have, if you have anything else, we got a couple minutes left, but, um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if anybody else has anything later that, you know, it's like, as soon as you get off the call, he's like, oh man, I should I ask that? Just, you know, email me or call me and, you know, we'll obviously talk and we can walk through it. Um, you know, the key thing is just keep moving forward. Uh, this is something that everybody should be doing. And one last thing I didn't really talk about, and I think it might, uh, be uh, worthwhile is just how often. And again, I talked briefly, but you know, this is something that right now we should be doing these things quarterly, maybe even more often than that. Uh, you know, normally a once a year, twice a year is is fine. But when things are changing rapidly, we have to adjust to it, and we have to be paying attention to it. And we're, we're going to, there's going to be certain issues for the next three months that are part of the transition that are going to be different than the next three months after that. 
And so we're gonna have to start thinking about that. So other than that, I think that was pretty much it. Um, I really appreciate all of you joining me on the call. And like I said, if you have questions, uh, shoot me an email, call me. And if you wanna walk through how to do this, I'm glad to help you with it. Thank you again, and I hope all of you have a great day. I will be sending out a copy of this recording uh, as soon as it's ready, sometime this afternoon, and uh, hopefully that will help. I hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.